ora and welcome to Monday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news central bank rate cuts are expected this week from some but not all and Shane Elliott may be about to end his time at ANZ. But first in the week ahead most eyes will be on the American Consumer Price Index and tomorrow, that's Tuesday, the RBA will review its cash rate target and is expected to make no change at 4.35% and staying above the RBNZ 4.25%. Central banks in Canada and the EU as well, as well as Switzerland, will review too. And the Canadians are expected to cut by 25 basis points, the ECB by 50 basis points and the Swiss by 25 basis points. Inflation data from India is due too. In China, they deliver CPI, PPI, trade data and new yuan loans data. Back in Australia, we follow their November Labor Report and the NAB Business Confidence Report. And perhaps we'll get our own REINZ real estate market report for November at the end of the week, although no actual date is set yet. Over the weekend, the headlines say the US economy added 227,000 jobs in November compared with an upwardly revised 36,000 in October, which was heavily influenced by Boeing strikes and disruptions caused by hurricanes. The November rise was above market expectations of 200,000. Employment trended up in healthcare, leisure, hospitality, government and social assistance, while the retail trade lost jobs. Meanwhile, the jobless rate inched up to 4.2%. This move probably raised the chance of a 25 basis point rate cut at the Fed's next meeting next week and taking the lower bound to 4.25%. Looking behind these headlines, total employer payrolls rose to 160.6 million, a 525,000 person rise from October and a 2.2 million rise from a year ago. This is a significant swelling of employer payrolls. More broadly, their household survey has the employed workforce 161.5 million, which includes the unincorporated self-employed. Average hourly pay is up 4% in November from a year ago, Average weekly earnings were up 3.7% as overtime work slipped. These are better gains than expected. This overall bullish labour market report was reinforced by the University of Michigan sentiment survey for December, which rose for a fifth consecutive month to its highest level since April. Current conditions sentiment drove this. But rather than as a sign of strength, this rise was primarily due to a perception that purchasing now would enable buyers to avoid future price increases. Consumers see inflation trouble ahead. So perhaps they bought more using personal debt. Total American consumer debt jumped $19.2 billion in October when a $10 billion rise was expected. It accelerated from a downwardly revised $3.2 billion rise in the month earlier. This marked the fastest pace of growth since July, equating to an annual growth rate of 4.5%, up from just 0.8% in September. Revolving credit, which includes credit card debt, saw a notable 14% increase, the largest since February, following a smaller 1.4% gain in September. Meanwhile, non-revolving debt, which includes car and student loans, grew by just 1.1%, up only slightly from a half percent the prior month. Canada also released employment data for November over the weekend. Their employment rose 54,000, almost all of it, full-time jobs. But their jobless rate rose to 6.8% in a seven-year high as more people entered their labour market as their participation rate rose. India reviewed its policy rate late Friday and made no change, although they did cut their reserve ratio for liquidity support reasons. In China... Home loan interest rates are being driven down into the 3% range, depending on the borrower financials, and there is talk they may fall below that in coming months. There is widespread news talk about how their housing market and their land sales to developers are recovering, but the real evidence is yet to emerge. But their logistics index indicates improvements in their overall economic activity, reaching a seven-year high. In Australia, media reports suggest that Shane Elliott will step down this week as CEO of ANZ Bank after nine years in the role. The OECD has released its latest update of its economic outlook. While it doesn't specifically cover New Zealand, it does point out in a release note that tensions are creating headwinds for international trade in both advanced and emerging markets and will probably get worse. 
They have a rather stunning chart about trade policy, and you can find that in the link in the show notes. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 4.15% and unchanged from Saturday, and the price of gold will start today at $2,633 an ounce, little change from Saturday and down $25 in a week. And oil prices are another 50 US cents lower at just over $67 a barrel in the US, while international Brent price is now just over $71 a barrel. A week ago, these prices were $68.50 and $72.50 a barrel, respectively, so down $1.50 since then. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 58.3 US cents and unchanged from this time Saturday, but down a cent from this time last week. Against the Aussie, we're down 10 basis points at 91.3 Australian cents. Against the euro, we've held at 55.2 euro cents. That all means our trade weighted index starts today at just on 68 to be unchanged from Saturday and down 60 basis points in a week. We're approaching a six-month low, driven primarily by the surging US dollar. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $99,796 and down 1.2% from this time Saturday. Volatility of the past 24 hours has been low and just on plus or minus 0.9%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston and we'll do this again tomorrow.